Okay, um, these first four bars, I'm uh, trying to play all the notes without playing a uh, open note. Notice I've got them all fretted. And notice the rhythm is the same in the first two bars as it is the next two bars. Um, by having all the notes be fretted, I feel like the coordination. Uh, works a little better because you're playing the same rhythm so you know you get some kind of finger uh, rhythm timed into your muscle memory and then you get to kind of reuse it uh, over and over again also I like to learn any kind of passage uh, that I want to store away it's a good I idea in all fretted notes because that way it's very easy to transpose across the neck you'll see how that uh, comes in handy later Okay, the uh, next four bars feature a uh, real sequence. That means we have uh, an idea. 2-5, A minor 7, to D7. Then we transpose it down a half step, the same thing. Sounds like. And it uh, builds a lot of uh, reflection in the harmony there very directly. It's a good uh, sequence, good way to play over those chords, good patterns there, using the uh, 1, 2, 3, and 5 of each of those uh, respective chords. You notice on the minor 7 we play the uh, first five notes of the Dorian. On the D7 chord we play the first five notes of the Mixolydian, and we've just made a pattern. Uh, now notice the last two bars feature this step where you have to walk and realize the bass line from a chord symbol. So what I do, like on if I get all four beats, if it's like a major chord, I'll almost always play 1, 3, and 5. Like that. Sometimes I play 1, 2, and uh, 3, and 5. Something like that. Or I'll go down. Or maybe something like... Something like that. You know, just arpeggiating through the chords and putting the root note on the downbeat, on the strong beats, right? Uh... Also, uh, this A7 chord that comes next, notice I'm not quite playing it like an A7 arpeggio, like I would play the A, C sharp, uh, E, and G. Though I'm using a lot of the notes. I've got this B flat in there, too, to lead it off. The reason is, is when you have a 7 chord, a dominant 7 chord, in this case, A7, uh, that is going to a minor chord, it's going to a D minor chord next, you often play that 7 chord as an A7 flat 9. And the reason is so the voice leading is strong to the uh, minor uh, 7 chord. What makes the voice leading work is the half steps between the chords. And um, the 7 of the A7 chords, or any kind of dominant 7 chord when it resolves regularly, is going to go to the 3rd of the next chord. So in this case, the 7 of the A7 is G, and the 3rd uh, of the next chord, D minor 7, is an F. But the problem is... It's not very strong resolution because there's a whole step there. So what you have to do, you have to use A7 flat 9. Get that flat 9, that uh, B flat, resolve into the fifth of the next chord, the A, by half step. And that makes a strong enough resolution. So that's why I have that C major 7 arpeggio, or C major arpeggio, followed by that 
And by the way, that uh, seven flat nine chord, all that is is a diminished arpeggio built off any other scale degree besides the root of that chord. So you could build it off the flat nine. You could build it off the seven, off the uh, fifth, or off the uh, third. You know, and you get the same thing because a uh, four diminished seventh chord is uh, completely symmetrical because it's just minor thirds. There's only 12 notes to play from, so a minor third is three frets. Three frets spread over four times is 12 notes exactly. That's why it's completely symmetrical. Um, then uh, we're going to go on to the next part and get to the D minor 7. So that's coming up. Okay, when I've played this tune, by the way, the changes of this tune is really a uh, satin doll. And it's a very popular swing tune. You'll probably play it a lot uh, if you keep playing jazz. And uh, you will play it a lot. You'll play it so much that you don't want to play it anymore. But um, this D minor 7 to this G7, I see this bass line in a lot of charts that are written out. So you have the D on the downbeat and the third of the D minor 7, the F, going to the root of the G7, G going to the 7th of G7 makes this kind of toggle it kind of reflects the harmony I like it but what I do is when I get ready to change chords up to the E minor 7 one of the tricks you can do about a 7 chord is you can go um, a half step above or below to where you're about to go so I could be like below the E7 D sharp and it's a kind of neat little trick uh, to resolve seven chords uh, to go into the next bar. You can just look ahead and play up or down a half step and it always sounds good. Alright, now um, take a look at the last note of that uh, fourth bar. I'm playing a B flat after that A. The reason is because if you look at the next chord, it's another type of A chord. It's A minor 7 flat 5. So what I did is I played that A on the downbeat on 3 on beat four, I played a half step up away from the next chord, which is an A, ironically. So it still works out. That'll take us to the next two, next four bars. So uh, one thing at this point, you want to look ahead because he has some stuff that's written out again before the phrase ends on uh, over the C major seven chord. You know when you see that. So what we have to do is figure out a way how to land on that note real smoothly. So well, we're going to think about that right now. So we have a D flat 9 chord, right? So a D flat 9 is kind of like a D flat 7. It has the same quality. It's a dominant type chord. And remember what I said is you want to play the down beats. So that chord happens on beat 3. So we can play that D flat on beat 3. And then we can play up or down a half step from that next chord, which is a C. So we're already on D flat, so we might as well change notes to the other one that's down. A half step from the C, the B natural. And that'll put us right there to play that third and fourth measure. So if we back up a little bit and work backwards, we see this uh, A minor, uh, A flat uh, minor 9 chord. So you can play 1 and 5 of it, and then go down like what we just did. Then if you back up to the very beginning, you can get the uh, A of the A minor 7 flat 5 on the root and then play the flat 5. Then you're just a half step from the D. Then you can play the fifth of the D chord, the A, which now you're half step away from the A flat. Then you have the rest of them. So it's like 1, 2, or 3, 4. Okay, in the next four bars, I'm really picky about where I play open notes and where I don't play open notes. You'll see what I mean. So on the first bar, I play all fretted notes, except for the A. It's worth the stretch, trust me, because you can clean the note up better with the uh, lifting of the left hand fingers. The reason I play the open A is because I'm just about to put my second finger down on the same string and play the C. You get a really nice clean line there with no strings ringing into each other. Then on the next bar, 
I went ahead and used the open D string there. And when I put down my second finger on the C, I kind of mute the other uh, string, the open D that came before it at the same time. And it gives it a real clean feeling. You need to practice that slow. It makes sure the strings aren't ringing into each other like this. No, I don't do any of that. One note at a time, nice and clean. And then the third bar is just some octaves. Now the fourth, the fourth bar is interesting because I went up playing the open string on the G, but on the way back down I played the fretted note. The reason I did that is because going up, when I press the A down, uh, I don't have to worry about the muting. So it stops the G because the A is on the same string. But when I go to the uh, the last G, the second G in that fourth bar, I fret it. That way it's on the same string as the F. That way the muting just kind of takes care of itself and you get one nice line of one note at a time. Okay, notice the next four bars starts kind of like the last four bars did. This kind of descending scalar sequence. It's exactly a uh, the same intervals as the last one just moved up two frets. So what I have here, except for we don't have an open note to get on the last note of the uh, first bar there. Notice I'm using two fingers for that. You know, on the E I'm playing the pinky, and on the B, I've got my th third finger. That way I control the length of them really good. Then the uh, second bar I have. I have this, uh, those three notes on two strings. And then uh, the third bar. And the fourth bar. I'm playing on the same two strings. So every note is fretted, and notice I can control the length and the style, and that was really good like that. Okay, in the next four bars, uh, there's kind of a wrong note. Uh, I've made it right in the recording, but uh, I want to point it out. Uh, so what we have here is we have a... Uh, ascending kind of minor scale, five note scale at the beginning. It's a Dorian scale by the time it gets up to that sixth note up there. And then I literally just move my fingers up two frets and do the same thing. But notice that C sharp there is a C natural in the music. I hate the way that C natural sounds. It just doesn't reflect the harmony at all. Um, that whole idea and idioms that you play over these chord changes where you have, you know, D minor 7, the G7, D minor 7, the G7, then you play, uh, if you're playing a lot, a lot of players will play the same idea they just played over the next two bars when it goes to E and A, but they'll just play it up a whole step. Uh, this is typically what you should do, and it kind of fits the uh, um, style of the song and how it's been played in the past, and I think you ought to respect that and change that. Uh, C to a C sharp there. It'll make it uh, those four bars sound a lot better. Okay, the uh, last four bars, uh, you get a uh, direct sequence again, or a real sequence, you should say. So we got the uh, first measure. Notice I played all fret and notes, and then the second measure, I played the same thing, but down a fret. And then the last measure, a little tricky, I go. The first two notes to play with my first finger and my fourth finger, and then on that high C right there, I shift up with the first finger. So I can get the fourth finger on the D. And then when I get back down to the G, I kind of cram the pinky back in there so I can have time to reach back to the low C. Nice and smooth. Okay, now use the uh, backing track with drums and uh, backing guitar and try to play in really good time. Just lock in with the tempo, play with good style, um, you know, listen to the note links, make sure they're not too long, not too short. Uh, it kind of has a nice light swing style to it. And uh, make sure that you don't have any overlapping notes or any messy sounds. You know, really try to make the best music out of this as you possibly can. Uh, think about you know, the best jazz player you know playing this and try to emulate that and don't stop 
until it sounds that good. Just strive every day to make it sound more and more professional sounding.